Unknown oh, 9 is the game I want to talk about. Unknown oh, 9 Awakening. Um, a game that's had one of the most disastrous launches in uh, quite some This is a year where we had Concord as well. We've had a lot of these over the past few weeks. <laughs> Tell, me. <laughs> Tell me about this game because I like the look of the trailers, but truth be told, I forgot it was even coming out right. now. I thought it was a 2025 thing. So this this is... So I managed to get a code for this. So like massive thank you to um, Bando Namkai. Bando Namkai? Namco Bandai. That's it. I'll forever get that wrong. Um, massive thank you for them to them for sending the code over. I got, this got on my radar because it's the perfect, like old school PS2, early 360 era game that I absolutely love. Like a PsyOps, the mind gate conspiracy, a dark sector, um, something like that. Like just a cool character with a cool set of powers. And the more I looked at the gameplay, um, trailers for it, like there's a developer run through over on the channel, uh, on the um, Namco channel. You know, it's like you're playing as a character called Haruna. She's played by Anya Chalotra, who was um, Yennefer in The Witcher show. And it's like, it's just, it's a third person brawler where you're doing like telekinetic powers. You're sending dudes flying into explosives. You're pulling other dudes off the top of cliffs. Um, you can do these really, it's also a stealth game, right. which is like, there are like three stealth games released every 10 years at this point. <laughs> so I'll take one. Um, in this case, it is a lot of tall grass. It is a lot of waiting for AI to turn around. Um, but the stealth kills are like these really well animated, awesome ideas where you're pulling someone's soul out of them and then wiping it away or cutting it away. Like um, Haruna is a character is like a martial artist and yeah. just everything about this is so cool. Um, and it's like, it's part of a wider franchise as well, um, or an attempt at a wider franchise um, called the Unknown Nine franchise. Yeah. The game's called Unknown Nine Awakening, but there are three novels either in the works or some of them are already out. Oh, so um, it's like a, sorry to interrupt, it's like a new thing that's yeah. not an old one that I I sh would be embarrassed not to know. So this is this is where it starts to pivot because right. um, I thought it was already an established thing. Right. It's not. Um, they wanted, um, Bandai Namco wanted it to be this new ultimate franchise thing, this sort of book and, and uh, game and maybe even a TV show hopping thing. And Unknown Nine Awakening was meant to be the first step towards that. And it does open with like a ton of lore. Um, like, like I said, you're playing as a character called Haruna. She's like studying all these different dark arts and different ways of understanding how energy works in the universe. Um, and it's kind of cool. Like I think that it's it starts really well. It is almost arbitrary fiction where it's just sort of like, oh, the, the break occurred a thousand years ago and watch out for the, the ghosts that do this and like make sure you study your arm because the arm's the name of the soul stuff or whatever, and I think it can feel a bit like an AI-generated sci-fi script. Mm -hmm. um, I'm there for a convoluted law and dumb nomenclature. Like, I love really stupid, over-the-top laws. Give me Metal Gear Solid, give me whatever. Um, however, the <laughs> does all fall down. And I quite like the game. I think I'm pushing through it because I have such a fondness for, like I said, PS2 era uh, random action games and things like that. Um, I love a good six out of 10 game. If yeah. you can tell they tried, sweet, it'll yeah. carry it. Um, but the game is very buggy. The game is, uh, it just needs a patch. It right. needs a, a general performance patch. I saw IGN give it five out of 10. Um, and so I think it's the wider conversation. One, the game's quite buggy at the minute. Um, it does feel quite undercooked. The facial animation is occasionally abysmal, occasionally okay, but other times um, the animation alongside the rendering, you know when, some, I don't know what engine this is on, but sometimes on something like Unreal Engine, you'll cut to a character and you'll get like a clay face and then <laughs> right. it'll pop and you get the actual face. Um, sadly, that happens with Anya's character, Haruna, a lot. Um, and she's obviously the main star. Like, you know, it's a big deal that someone like as big as her is leading a new franchise. Yeah. Um, but especially at the beginning of the game, there's a bit <laughs> where it cuts to her and it was like two floating eyes in a sea of clay. And I was like, this is, this is, this needs a patch. Like, this is a bad time. <laughs> that's um, such a shame. So the game itself is a bit buggy. Um, oh, I, I, I'll get back to gameplay in a bit because there's one thing that it does that's incredible. Yeah. Um, but the wider thing is the marketing where, like you said, you didn't know it was coming out unless you've been keeping up with it. You have no idea. I was just going through earlier in the year, I was going through a list of everything that's coming out this year. And I just looked, I was like, oh, no, nine. I don't know what that is. Let me see what that is. Um, and then I looked at a gameplay trailer and I was like, sick, looks like it plays really well. Yeah. However, for whatever reason, they did not stick up and um, stick with the marketing very much. And um, the disastrous side of this is that only 200 people played it. Nice. Uh, on Steam anyway, the console sales could be a lot higher. I doubt it. Um, but only um, two, uh, 211 people across the last 24 hours have touched this. And the peak was 280 people. Um, and it's only been out since Friday anyway. So, um, and it is being sold for 45 pounds, $45. So I, it's one of those things where it could have landed in that sweet double A spot. Yeah. If, um, if the marketing had been done a bit better, if they got out there and showcased the features a bit more um, because it is a cool world. It's a cool set of powers. Like, you know, when was the last time you had a 3D brawler with telekinetic powers? Like, it just doesn't exist. And it's a stealth game. Um, the last thing I want to throw in, because I'm rambling a lot, but the last thing I want to throw in 
is that you do have a really cool power where you take over any enemy. Mm -hmm. So like if you're fighting like two dudes who have like batons or whatever, and there's a sniper like trying to shoot you from across the level, beam into that sniper and re-aim re his hit on one of those two dudes. And then when you resume time, that guy gets taken out and then you can take <laughs> out the other guy. You can also chain that together. So you can be like, I'm gonna chain the dude with the bat to take out the guy next to him, to take out the guy next to him. Then I'm gonna run a guy into some explosives and then I'm whatever, like you can do all these different actions. Um, which reminds me of like a Blood Omen 2, which I know mm. is a really deep pull, but in Blood Omen 2, you could take control of NPCs and make them do things as well. So um, it's that era though. They're kind of pulling from that era. It's a, it's a drastic lack of polish um, for the sake of some cool mechanics that are in there. Um, but clearly the market has not responded to it. Ah, man, you know, <laughs> on the one hand, in the best possible way, it sounds like such a Scott Telford game yeah. through and through with that mechanical focus. And you've made, that, me, you've made me want to play it now. I bought that Werewolf Bloodlines game. Yeah, you I did. I want to play as a werewolf and throw dudes through crates. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I, I think with what you mentioned there about the bugs and about the technical issues, uh, to me, <laughs> this game did not need to release right now. I no. don't know why it has released within this glut of titles that we are getting so many of them high profile. I mean, October alone, you've got the big hitters of Silent Hill. You've mm. got Call of Duty. You've got Dragon Age coming at the end of the month. In between that, you've got Metaphor. <laughs> you've got all of these uh, small horror games that are coming out as mm -hmm. well. Like it is absolutely stacked this month, next month, and even last month was pretty stacked as mm -hmm. well. So to drop this game with the lack of marketing, like you said, is, is a bit of a shame, especially when it doesn't make that strong first impression on a technical front. Mm. Like could this not have come out in a quieter window with that extra bit of polish and maybe impressed people? Mm -hmm. It's such a shame when these games have great ideas or have something about them, but they're either hampered by a completely overwhelming release mm -hmm. window or just the technical issues that you kind of think, what, what, why did you need to be there? <laughs> I also think that it's like, because a lot of people like harken back to the days of like the, the wider palette of titles that were there on the PS2, that were there on the 360. We talk about random 360 era games yeah. or PS2 platformers or whatever it is. And that want for the double A to return or like not everything needs to be a giant live service. And at the same time, not everything just needs to be an indie game or whatever. Like, you can have that middle tier. This, like Warhammer Space Marine 2, perfect middle tier, double A game, like sold very, very well, phenomenal, plays phenomenally, and has some new ideas in it in terms of it um, being part of the uh, third person shooter genre. This is like, if they led, because it's, like I said, it's in that bracket of like the suffering or psyops mm -hmm. or whatever, second sight. Um, where you need to get the gameplay mechanics front and center. Like if this was shown off with the um, the telekinetic stuff, the force push stuff, pulling dudes into explosives, cha that, that chaining mechanic is so cool. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't necessarily carry the whole game. Um, but there's enough here. Like there's definitely enough here for it to be um, celebrated. And uh, we're doing a video on it because it's just something that I was following for a good long time, like a good few months. Um, and I do think it's interesting. Um, how wide of the push is um, to be like, we have a bunch of novels, we have a game. Mm. Like, assumedly, all that stuff's going to get canned now, unless you just lead with the books and maybe retroactively it makes the game sales work or something. Um, but that idea of trying to get a whole new franchise off the ground um, is in itself super ambitious and is like an interesting talking point because yeah. when one um, cog in that wider plan doesn't land, then the whole thing starts to sputter and fall apart. Yeah, there is something to be said about the gaming industry running before I can walk mm. with um, ideas like this. It's all... <laughs> well and good on paper to say, we're gonna have the next big franchise, mm. but when your initial outing doesn't hit, which it doesn't seem like it has with audiences right now, mm. that in, initial, it instantly throws everything else into disarray. It reminds me of the dark, um, what was it called? The dark, dark. universe oh, okay. over at yes. Universal when they tried to make their MCU competitor with all of the horror characters that they have. <laughs> and they announced a whole list of A-listers playing like the mummy and the wolf man and mm. what have you and then Tom Cruise's The Mummy came out and it wasn't well received and then everything was cancelled and it's like now that is just like one promotional picture yeah. that has RIP written over it. I, I do like the sound of this but I mean if you're going to be this ambitious right you, you gotta nail that first impression you've gotta make sure it's the best possible version of what you're trying to sell and it just seems like this isn't it? It just seems like it is another video game, which yes. is a shame because like you mentioned there in that double A space, some of my favorite games or at least some of the best surprises that I've played this year have been 
in that kind of 40 pound, maybe even straight to Game Pass, double A mm. space, you know. I really enjoyed Flintlock um, earlier right. on in this year. That mm. really surprised me. There have been a few releases like it that have arrived, had great ideas, but the players just haven't responded for whatever reason. And I think it is just an overwhelming amount of choice that we have. Mm. And I, I kind of see, I don't, I don't agree with it, but I mm. see now why executives at Sony or Microsoft are pivoting towards those high risk, high reward um, games, because it does, the more I see the numbers on games that do try to attract people from that middle of the market mm. at 40 quid at the double A space, so many of them are failing now. Yeah, I think like that's interesting because like, like Helldivers 2 flew and that yeah. was at like 45 pounds and um, Space Marine 2 was doing really, really well. I don't think that was 70, but that feels like an old campaign. And it's like it's a multiplayer game with a single player made later. Um, but yeah, I want to believe in the double A that it can exist. Um, but yeah, something like Unknown 9, um, you know, it is worth saying for anyone who's like curious about picking it up, it is very rough. Um, you know, it, it is, it, it, assumedly there are performance patches, like general optimization patches in the works, but it's a shame that it launched so buggy anyway. I do think the big problem with it is the marketing. Yeah. Um, just because they didn't get out there and showcase that stuff. But also, I'm um, on the negative side, you know, you are crawling through, you're squeezing through places to get to the next level. Like, um, you're getting those arbitrary faux AAA trappings of trying to put this world together kind of thing. I don't know if it's the um, developer Reflector Entertainment's first game. Right. Um, but it does feel like an early attempt at something. Um, I just think there's ambition and charm there. It's just, it's buried under like a lack of marketing. Um, that wider franchise push that is maybe asking people to get involved in more than there's actually there. And the release schedule, like you said, it is absolutely, this is the worst month <laughs> to release something. You know, you're, you're buried under Sound yeah. Hill 2, Dragon Ball, Metaphor, Dragon Age. Like it's, it's insane to pick this month to drop in. Um, and try and make people turn heads to something that is um, so arbitrarily put together. 